Hello and welcome back artists, designers, and animators. Today we're going to do the traditional... Okay, so I have successfully keyframed each of my bounce points here, the top and the bottom of my bounce points. If I scrub back through my animation, I can see that this ball is now moving uh, on those bounce points. So if I were to play the animation right now, the ball would make the bounces, but it is not a very accurate representation of what happens uh, physically, and we're trying to get the squash and stretch. So the next step here, here is to adjust the path. So this dotted line right here, we're just going to go to this. I'm going to zoom back in on my template here. And what we're going to want to do is you're going to, it doesn't matter where your playhead is, that's okay. We're going to hover over this line, and you're going to see that uh, arrow kind of adds the curve to it. And you're just going to drag that up and try to kind of get that curve to match the curve on the template right here. So we're trying to get a nice kind of parabolic curve to this to match with that. So I'm just gonna work my way through this. I will note one thing, be careful if you click, you're gonna notice that the whole thing highlights and then if you try to drag, it thinks you wanna move the entire uh, motion tween and we don't wanna do that. So we're gonna undo that and then we click back on it and whoops, something just happened there. Hold on a second. There we go. Undo, bring us back there. All right, so be careful. Just hover your mouse over it, click and drag, and you should be good to go. So I'm just quickly going through here and adjusting the tweening path. And that should be pretty good. I You can see I have some extra frames at the end past 48 or uh, once it gets to about frame 44 or 45 goes off frame and that's totally fine. So uh, let's play that and see how that looks right now. So there we go. We have a much more natural uh, motion on that bounce at this point. So we're getting pretty close here. Okay, next step. We could go in and do the squash and stretch, but I'm going to recommend that we do some keyframing before we do the squash and stretch. So let me demonstrate what not to do first. If you go in and you do your squash and stretch immediately, let's go to my first squash point. That's right here. Okay, frame eight. If I grab my uh, transform tool and I start squashing this ball, zoom in here so I can squash it. Remember, when you squash and squash and stretch, you are trying to maintain the proportion uh, or the mass of that ball, not the proportion, but the mass of the ball so that you're not adjusting it too much. Here's why I don't recommend doing this first. What's going to happen now if I scrub through my playhead, you're going to see it starts at the natural shape and then immediately starts distorting into the squash form. Uh, because it thinks you only have a keyframe right here and a keyframe right here. So it's going to immediately start that squash right into it, and it's going to maintain that squash for the rest of this. So this is clearly not what we want. So I'm going to go ahead and undo uh, my squash points there. So what I'm going to recommend that we do before we do the squash and stretch, okay, we're going to go ahead and keyframe the pre and post stretch. So I'm going to go here to about... Uh, frame, I think, I would say frame five looks pretty good. So frame five, I think we still want it to be natural shape. Four or five, it's up to you. So five, let's go ahead and go there, and then we're just going to hit keyframe. Boom. Add that in. So then we'll do the squash and stretch, but before, I'm going to go back up to frame 11, I think, right here, frame 11 or 12. I'll leave that up to you, and we'll go ahead, keyframe. Back over here, I would say frame 17, keyframe, and we're going to continue that on. That's going to save you a little bit of time in the long run. Keyframe right here. Uh, during this last you know, bounce or so, it's, the squash and stretch is going to be very minimal, but you could still go ahead and keyframe those out right here. I don't know if you're going to do much of a stretch there, uh, but you're just keyframing so that it is going to stay at that normal shape. I think I'll skip it in the last one. Not a lot of momentum there. It should be pretty normal. All right. I have those all keyframed out at this point. So my animation doesn't look any different right now. Uh, but what you'll see what happens in the next step is it becomes a lot easier to do the squash and stretch. So now that I have my keyframes and I've got new keyframes here, I'm going to go to my first stretch frame. I'm going to start here. I'll zoom back in so that we can see what we're doing. And I'm going to grab my transform tool. 
and I am going to attempt to maintain my mass of the ball. And it can be helpful to turn on onion skinning at this point, because you might want to be able to see the size of that ball pre and post. So I'm going to go ahead and get this adjusted and go right outside here and you can rotate it to follow the trajectory of that bounce. And that looks pretty good to me. We can go back and adjust that a little bit if we need to. So that's maximum stretch right there at frame seven. So it should start stretching and then go there. And then I'm going to go ahead and readjust back to the squash. So I'm going to rotate that again and squash that up something along the lines of that. I'm going to move it so that it's in the right spot here as well. Bounces right off of the ground. Wants to kind of lock into that position, but I think that's okay. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, close enough. All right, next frame right here, maximum stretch. So we are now stretching out the other way. And although you might be tempted to rotate it, that's going to create some weirdness. So I usually try to bring it back to the normal shape, stretch it out this way and rotate it out in this general direction. And again, try to math, match that uh, mass and get that adjusted so that that looks proper right there. So let's scrub through that. And that looks like we get the stretch, the squash, the stretch, and then it goes back to the natural shape. We've got a new keyframe right over here and we're gonna repeat that process for the next one. So I'll do one more. And then I think we should be pretty much good to go on this. So let's go over here. We're going to do max stretch right here. So maximum amount of stretch, which again, probably won't be quite as much um, over in this general area. So maybe something like that. And then next frame. And when you do the adjustment uh, to reshape it, you're going to see that it automatically adds that keyframe there. So you don't have to add a keyframe. Uh, so we'll take this. Rotate that back to normal position and squash it out. Again, maybe not quite as much as the first time. I'm going to readjust that positioning so that it's in the right spot. Again, wants to kind of lock in here, but I think that'll be good enough. That little tweak there. All right. And the last one right here, maximum stretch. Rotate. Oops rotate and something along the lines of this and then let's go ahead um, I'll leave the last couple here I think you can get the process at this point so let's take a look at that let's give it a quick preview here I go like that and it's getting there so I can add that last one in and hopefully that'll get uh, the whole thing rounded out for us so it looks like we're getting natural physics and once you learn how to do that it's pretty quick. So work on wrapping up that animation here. Make sure that you hide your template layer at the end so that we don't see that. Let's add some extra little fun to this. Put a ground line, some background in there. Now that you know how to tween, you can have clouds move around, add some frame by frame, water splashes, mud splashes into this, anything you like here. So hope you had a little bit of fun figuring out how to do that. We did our uh, squash and stretch. We used our motion tween and you have your template here. You can follow through the instructions and have some fun creating your ball bounce. All right, good luck and I'll see you in the next video.